Hello everyone. It's been a hot minute since I did a mail call or anything like that. Uh, things have been, well, you know, things have been nuts. Um, <laughs> a lot of stuff going on. I've uh, been doing the office updates and whatnot, but uh, haven't really had time to sit down and uh, opine about the items I've been acquiring. So uh, for once, I actually have a decent amount of mail right now. A number of uh, viewer submissions um, that I'm uh, fairly excited about. Uh, well, one of them's not so exciting. One of them, I don't, know, I don't know what it is, so that's also cool. Uh, I'll start, however, with uh, these guys here. These are fun. So I got these on the Electronic Bay um, a couple weeks ago. Haven't done anything with them yet because I've just been too swamped. It was a sort of a spur of a moment like, oh my god, I can't believe that's on there. Uh, so here, uh, this is a Minolta RD175. This, as you may have guessed already, is an early digital SLR camera. See, it's got three CCD down here, uh, but it's based on a film camera design. This is a Minolta Maxim or Dynax. I think it's a Dynax. Um, and who gives a shit which one it is? They're all the same. I, I, I couldn't name the difference between any... I can't name any plastic uh, motorized film advanced camera. <laughs> Not a single one. Um, but anyway... So this is a really early DSLR. This is from like 1995, I want to say. Um, there were earlier ones. I actually recently corrected the wiki article because it said this was the first production digital SLR. Bullshit. There were several before it. Uh, the Kodak DCS. I don't know. Go to Wikipedia. Look it up. They're, they had them in 92, 93. They sucked. Um, but they didn't suck that much more than this one. So I would say this still, in my opinion, still doesn't really count. Anyway, so it's a terrible hybrid... Um, monster of a design. I actually, I love early digital SLRs because they're hybrid monster designs. Very consistently, they're film bodies that have had digital components glommed onto them. You can actually see the part line on this one. Right there is where film body, right off the production line, just with different roll stamping or, or silk screening. And then this is all an awful zombie uh, head crab kind of thing that's, that's glommed on here to make it act digital. Um, as a result, there's a number of quirks. Um, you can actually see the, this is where the film door would have been, and they've actually anchored the digital back to the film door. If I could knock that pin out, we could actually just peel the whole digital back off. And depending on where this, this goes, I might do that, because these may not work, and it may end up actually making sense for me to take this off. But anyway, because it's a horrible zombie hybrid, um, it actually takes three batteries. <laughs> so the primary cell, in theory, is... Um, actually a Sony Infolithium. Minolta didn't even make their own battery pack for this. They just reused the Sony NPF and put their own name on it. Uh, here, I think, um, yeah, this one came with a pack, right? Looks all special and proprietary. Honk, Minolta, NP500H. Hmm, NP, that seems curiously close to, oh, there it is. <laughs> Sony Corporation, honk. Yeah, so um, it just takes Sony Infolithiums, which honestly, that's the beginning of the sort of hackish weirdness quotient of this camera. Then there's a CR2032 to keep the date and time. That's not that unusual. And then there's this cavity, which this is actually on the original body. This is the only battery the original camera took, the Dynax that they started with. And that takes a pair of what they used to call photo lithiums, um, just a um, uh, little three volt. They look like uh, 18 three fit, no, smaller than 18 three fit. Anyway, they, they're like half A cells or something like that. But that does, that powers the on, built-in uh, flash. So anyway, um, sorry, I'm a little hyperventilating a little. I'm, I'm doing, sorry, it's been a heck of a day. Um, I got this GoPro, by the way, I got a new GoPro, except it's not new. Uh, it's a Hero 4, which is quite some years old. And uh, I got it entirely by luck. I was at the RePC returning some stuff and they asked if I wanted to exchange for anything. And I'm like, oh, I'll take a spin around. So I took a spin around and um, I actually came up with this GoPro and a gimbal for well, very good price. Um, but problem is, it didn't come with this guy. Like there's a case. I didn't realize this. These mounts aren't built into the GoPros. And so it's supposed to come with a case that's got the mating uh, 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 prongs for this thing to screw into. So I bought this head mount and I, the camera doesn't have the fittings for it. So there you go. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but <laughs> Yeah, that's some cardboard that I made an angle adapter out of, and it's all just taped together. Hey, you know, it works, right? Well, we'll find out if it works. 
Anyway, these guys are very strange. I have not actually fired either one of them up yet. I I bought these on a whim. It wasn't really a good time to be buying weird stuff like this, but but I think these are normally upwards of three to four hundred dollars, even untested. And I think I think I got both of these for like 120 or 150 bucks, something like that. It was such a killer deal. I decided, well, it was a bid. It was an auction and nobody else bid. It's another one of those. This keeps happening to me. This is how I get all my beige whales. Uh, <laughs> so um, I got these at such a good deal. I'm like, oh, sh sure. Yeah, why not? I'll go for it. Um, but I didn't really have time in my life to test them out. Now, I also didn't realize the battery they took was an, uh, a Sony Infralithium until yesterday. I was Googling it, trying to find information. I found an old, like, I think like a news group post or something. It was talking about these things and asserted that they used Sony Infolithium. And I'm like, that can't be true. And I flipped it over and took a look at the battery. And well, sure is shooting. <laughs> what do you know? So um, uh, I didn't realize I had batteries that'll fit this. So I'm very excited to try that out. I don't think they're going to work um, at all. But uh, I'll, I'll fire these up uh, at some point in this video or, or give it a shot anyway. By the way, it's probably obvious, but the, the optics in this are not normal, right? Because you're... I think your films, I think your image sensor is all the way back here or something like that. I don't even know. I don't even know if there is an image plane indicator on here. Cameras are supposed to have that, but this one, I don't see that it does. Um, maybe it's maybe it's there. I don't know. But anyway, my understanding is that these have active optics in them. So I think it's got like a little tiny sensor or something like that. Uh, and um, whatever lens you put on here, I think it's got a crop factor that makes APS-C look like a joke. It makes it look like full frame. I think it's like a some, I think it's some nutty like three or four X crop factors, huge. So, yeah, these things, super terrible, bad. Can't wait to try them out. Um, in theory, I can. They they originally used PS, PCMCIA spinning hard disks, and I do have two of those that work. But um, they'll also ostensibly take like a CF card and a PCMCIA adapter, or maybe one of these flash memory cards. This is a six meg. So I've got stuff to try that out with. Uh, figure you out later. I also, um, uh, let's see, okay, let's put some stuff aside. Uh, what else we got? I'll, I'll get into the packages in a moment. Oh, uh, by the way, just for kicks. Remember these? <laughs> oh man, uh, I've used a cold heat one time and from the looks of the tip, I'd say the previous owner only used it one time either. Uh, these things are god awful, but but once in a long, long while, you have a use for it. I'm sorry, if you don't know, I just realized you might not know. A lot of people might not know. So they call this thing the cold heat. That's bullshit. It gets hot just like anything else, but it doesn't get hot. That's not true. It doesn't get hot like anything else. It gets hot like itself. Uh, so the idea here is suppose you're soldering two wires. Um, or you're starting something to a contact or whatever. Well, somebody, at, um, they were branded Coleman for a while, but I think they come from, probably from Cold Heat Inc., Cold Heat Limited. Somebody realized, hey, it's really hard to run a soldering iron off of normal batteries. This was before vape cells were a thing. You couldn't, you couldn't just buy 18650s at your local smoke shop, so, and you shouldn't anyway. Um, and so this thing actually runs if I recall correctly, this actually does... Oh, wow. Whoa, that is jammed on there. If I recall correctly, this does actually run off of double A's. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, wow, this thing is very poorly made. Um, but anyway, I think it runs off of six double A's. So you're looking at... Um, what? Jeez, uh, jeez Louise, what is that? I don't remember. Wait, for... It might be three or four double A's. Anyway, it's like five to five to eight volts it's somewhere in there. God, this thing is poorly made. Look at this. I'm just absolutely screaming trying to get the battery cover back on. Boy, what a piece of shit. Let's get the little, little hole. Wow, the tolerances on this mold uh, are just dire. I'm sorry. Let me... I've only handled two of these in my life, and the last one was um, uh, ridden hard and put away wet already, so I didn't have these problems with it. There's no, there's nothing to it. And here's why. Here's how this works. Uh, temperature control circuitry, <laughs> get out of here. Um, magnetic thermal, get out of here. 
it might be hard to see on this camera. I'm not used to the GoPro yet. I don't even know if you can see this clearly, but there are the tip on here is two hunks of compressed granulated carbon with a gap between them and an insulator. And those are simply, as far as I know, just paired. Uh, those are just wired straight into the battery pack. And what happens is you take this bad boy. It's the operative bad, not the Michael Jackson bad. Um, you take this bad boy and you take your uh, weldment um, and you bridge the two parts, two conductive parts with it, usually of the solder itself. It's not how you're supposed to do it, but let's move on. Uh, and um, it just couples those batteries through the joint. And as you may know, amperage uh, being constant as far as uh, the wire gauge uh, and AA batteries being able to provide a large amount of amperage for a short period. Basically, you touch this on there, you have a short circuit through your batteries. You're going to get like, I don't know, three or four amps and just long enough to heat, to create local heating high enough to melt that solder. Now, anybody who knows anything about soldering is aghast at this idea. I mean, that's, I just described a cold solder. I mean, by cold heat, they mean cold solder joint <laughs> heat. Like these things don't work. They don't work, but that's what people say about a lot of stuff. <laughs> people point at a lot of things that work and say they don't work. No, they just don't work ideally. You shouldn't use that, but shouldn't is a very strong term. You're caught out. If you're in a situation for $5, I'd rather have this than not, because I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I got to do a bad solder joint to save my life in the dark with the power out. What am I going to do? Right? Uh, I'm planning on buying a Ryobi soldering station that takes one of their uh, 14 or 18 volt one plus packs, but still battery's dead. You can't just go out and buy a charged one, right? This guy, I can roll over to Home Depot and get myself some double A's. I'm back in business for just long enough to make an emergency solder joint, right? Would you rather have it when you need it or, uh, yeah, you know. Oh, uh, here's another, uh, so I've been looking for an AGP video card. And by the way, if you have a good AGP video card, I'm talking like a 512 meg or up late model XP compatible, please, um, that you want to get rid of, let me know. I could use one. I don't, the one that's in here sucks. The one that's in the edge kind of sucks. I'd love to replace them. But I go to the local stores, I go to Repc, um, and I, you know, I check in with the Goodwills and whatnot, nothing. They'll have the occasional 8 meg, 32 meg, maybe 128 meg, like a Radeon 9200 or something like that. And even that, rarely, rarely. They have almost nothing past like 2001, 2002. It's absurd. Um, so I'm looking for a decent card, right? I'm in the Goodwill earlier. Hey, Radeon HD 4670, AGP, it's a one gig card, it's $6. I don't know if it'll work on XP, but I'm gonna grab it anyway, right? Honk! Yeah, that's always the way it goes. Uh, I won't bother digging that out. That's a, I pulled it out earlier and checked the number, but I could tell just from the heat sink, that is a GeForce FX 5200 AGP, one of the worst video cards ever made, but it'll render OpenGL, so beats nothing. So I got it anyway, six bucks, whatever. Um, I couldn't even find a 5200 RePC last I checked. Okay, I got some other things to share, but uh, first, let's move on to the mail call part of the mail call. So this guy here, I know what this is already. Uh, it's not super revolutionary. Uh, it was just a, a fellow who watches, um, has a thrift store, I believe, somewhere. Uh, ain't gonna dox him, but anyway. Um, had a data video DAC 15 come in. And unfortunately, when people get rid of these, they usually don't work. And this one was no exception. So uh, you may recall, where does she go? There we go. Um, you may recall, I mentioned before in my big stream that I had one of these, um, but mine's missing the buttons on the front. And it's got a couple other ways in which it's a little beat up. This one's got the buttons. So pull those off, put them on there, make it complete. And I've got spares because I sort of live and breathe this thing. Love that thing. Anyway, that's all there is in that one. Like I said, not too exciting there. Just um, really pleased. It's hard to buy spare parts for these things, etc. cetera. Um, I did, you know, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but I don't want people to send me stuff that they could make money off of when we're all having such a hard time getting by, right? I like getting things, but 
take care of yourself first, right? Because I'll be here. Um, anyway, so I asked him to please try go and sell it on eBay first. And if it doesn't sell, then I'm willing to take it. And he tried. And to my surprise, it didn't. I was shocked. I really thought it was going to sell. Those things working, they sell for a couple hundo at least. I think it's more like three or five. Broken, I figured somebody would take it for parts for a couple hundred bucks. 75 bucks, anything. Yeah, I didn't know what to think. So, uh, by the way, I grabbed this because uh, it's a fake. This was actually a uh, friend of mine gave this to me. Came in at the e-cycle store and, and he managed to find it. Says it's a GTX 1050 tie, but you see, it's got that serif font. You know what that means. Yeah, it's a GT 560. It's hacked firmware. Um, so it shows up as a 1050. I'm really excited to see if this works. I got it for nothing, so what's it gonna do? Hurt me? Anyway, this sinking feeling this is gonna be adhered. Yeah, it's got adhesive under the under the Open this, open this side. Oh, okay. Who am I to argue with some marker? Though I think this one's going to be adhered as well. I, well, uh, thanks for trying. Anyway, uh, I hate the sensation of tearing paper. Just absolutely hate it. And I generally don't like things that are messy. And so, uh, uh, awful. All right, now I've been told there's some PII in here, so I may have to cut a chunk of the video when I come across whatever it is. There's, whoa. Mm. That's gonna be the PII, so I'll get to that. And then of course I forgot to actually come back to this thing, so <laughs> here I am during editing. The individual sent this to me, I had no idea what it was. They just said it was an orb, but they said it contained PII, personal identifying information, asked me to wipe it before I uh, actually turned it on. And on camera, so I set it aside and forgot to come back to it. So, uh, yeah, uh, orb, uh, the uh, right, <laughs> what on earth is it? Heavy, too, right? Uh, I had no idea what this was. Turns out it's a Google Nexus Q. Never heard of this thing, and apparently, what this is. Uh, I didn't actually research this too hard. I think this predates the Chromecast, I want to say. But it's basically, Google wanted to make a competitor with like the Apple TV, but I, I think it's meant to be a little more focused on audio. I believe these are actually amplified speaker outputs, I'm pretty sure. They're like heavy machined uh, speaker posts, right? I think you plug banana plugs in there. And this whole thing is just built like a shit brick house, heavy as hell. This is all machined aluminum. This is like two pounds of machined aluminum. This costs more than an Apple TV to make. Um, and also it's kind of horrible in a few ways. Like for instance, this HDMI port, micro HDMI. Come on, who wants that, right? Uh, <laughs> just, like, that sucks and uh, I'm lucky this adapter even fit. Uh, and then the highly recessed micro USB, I don't even know what that's for, but both of these, you can see horrible scratching where so just fighting to get the cable in. Uh, it does at least have a built-in power supply. It takes a figure eight cord. That's cool. On the other hand, it does mean uh, apparently this thing's got <laughs> high voltage circuitry inside of it. So that's fun. And then look at that big ball bearing ring running all around there for the, the rotary encoder. So I'm uh, yeah, I'm curious to plug this thing in and see what it does. I'm betting whatever service it connected to is long, long, long dead. Uh, it's probably basically a brick now. Oh, wow, you know what? I'll admit there's less meat on there than I realized. Oh, I see what they did. Okay, so it's actually... So I'm showing you a picture set of taking it apart because I'll bet taking it apart would take me an hour and a half. This part's aluminum. That's a big, you know, machined... No, cast, actually. It looks cast. I think it's a cast aluminum shell, and then as soon as you get past the skin, I don't know if you can see that, but only the outer 8 16th of an inch is metal, and then it turns to plastic inside, but it's got the exact same finish, so you don't necessarily notice it. You can see, though, in the picture, uh, the plastic part is hanging off the back here. That constitutes most of the inside. So it's not as big and chunky as I expected, which is absolutely par for the course for a company trying and failing to emulate apple that's always what happens they think oh we're gonna make uh, uh we're gonna be purveyors of jewelry appliances just like apple is and then 
they cut corners in places where Apple would just blow the money and waste it in order to make a product that looks more expensive, even more expensive than it actually is. This is exactly what I would expect from somebody trying to clone Apple. And all these companies that do it, Microsoft, Google, etc., trying to, oh, oh, why aren't we Apple? Why, why do people keep buying these iPhones? Uh, there's a reason. Anyway, I'll plug this thing in later and scrape it off and, uh, I don't know if I'll end up doing a video about it. I have the, like I said, I have the feeling it's not gonna really be able to do anything anymore, but if nothing else, I don't know. Orb. Maybe I'll just have it on a shelf, being an orb. I think that's the thing I was told I was gonna get, and then the rest of this is all stuff I ain't know I was gonna get. Would you look at that? RCA receiving tube manual. Yeah, okay, good condition. Useful book, if I don't use it. Maybe someone I know will use it. Uh, put it up on a, on a shelf. That's gonna fall over. This is the thing I was looking forward to and what the hell kind of USPS packaging is this? I've never seen anything like it. It's this like waxed fiber impregnated paper feeling stuff. This feels like this, this has the exact sensation that I'm gonna open this up. There's gonna be like five or six hamburgers in there. Anyway. I kind of bet you've probably never seen one of those before, most likely. So yeah, um, turn your iPod into a video recorder. This guy here, I, um, now I, I need to be clear. When I say that I couldn't find any information about this online, that's a very specific term of art that means I didn't try all that hard. But at a glance, you know, when I searched for this thing, I put in some specific terms, the IC360i. Nothing really came up. I think I got like one review. It was the kind of review you usually get from magazines that had online presence in like 2003, which is to say bullshit. Didn't, didn't really feel like it had much uh, value or truth to it. Anyway, so turn your iPod into a video recorder. So it's a dingus into which you slot your hingus. And oh, I did not realize this. I didn't know it had... I didn't know it had a screen on it. Uh, see, because I couldn't find any any pictures of the damn thing online, nothing, nothing at all. I had been under the impression that you just recorded blindly onto an iPod and then you had to plug it into your computer. But no, this actually takes your iPod and turns it into a portable video recorder, period. Wow. And it's got, so out of the box, it originally sported the iPod 20 gig click wheel, the U2 special, and then the Mini and Nano required an adapter, which they later included, <laughs> which is very funny. They must have had trouble selling it. Well, they must have had trouble selling it because I've never heard of it. And then the iPod 30 gig video. That's interesting. That makes me wonder if, um, if it recorded video that the video could play. Because here's the thing. Obviously, the iPod 20 gig click wheel does not support video playback or video at all, right? Um, and uh, that means that this thing doesn't make no sense, right? Well, they do support being used as a general purpose mass storage device, from what I understand. I didn't remember that, but I, when I showed this to people, they told me that they did support that. So, presumably, this thing just plugs into the 30-pin socket, mounts the disc as a disc, and then just records video onto it. Now, video from where? Well, um, it doesn't have a camera, sadly, but it's got... Oh, it's got a... Oh, it's got a dock of some kind and then AV cables. Oh, okay. So I think what you do with this, well, we'll just open it up and find out. But I think what you do with this thing is you drop it into the dock, you plug in cables, and then plugs into S-Video, um, uh, composite, audio video, and then, wow, it records an MPEG-4. I didn't expect that. Well, 2006, I guess that makes sense. Um, but the idea, I think, is that you dock it, you record your video, and then you take it wherever you're going to go, you plug it in, to a TV or you watch it on the device, you plug in headphones, you watch on the device itself. It essentially upgrades your iPod into an iPod video with the additional feature that you can record video directly into it. Very cool as a concept. This apparently, oh, well, okay. Um, I'm not sure what to think of this price tag because I was gonna say, oh, oh eight, that must've been sold in 2008, but then it starts with 82. And they probably, that was probably meant to be a zero. So February 21st, 2008, this was 200 American dollars, but there were two other price tags on here. So it either went down or it went up. Uh, no, it probably just went down. Anyway, uh, okay, we now have a 
I couldn't find this. I couldn't find the manufacturer. ATO, Advanced Technology Office. Wow, that's nobody. This is probably some Chinese import they just branded, but ICATO.com. That's interesting. Why didn't they just go ATO.com slash IC? Oh, and it's got a 2200 milliamp hour battery, which, boy, for the era, that seems, that seems like a lot of power. Boy, you remember back when things could come in just a basic flimsy cardboard box? Um, it's even an iPod accessory could come in a basic flimsy cardboard box instead of that modern um, high density, uh, heavyweight, good mouthfeel hardboard that they make the, the Apple makes all their boxes out of them. So of course everybody else has to make their box out of it as well. This thing's got some gravity. There, it's a lot heavier than I expected. This is gonna make your iPod into a chunky monkey. Let me tell you, the leatherette is degrading. Ugh, ugh, that's disgusting. It's just turned into, oh, thought I felt something drop into the bag when I picked it up. I guess it m must not have. Anyway, okay, so it's got the iPod Nano adapter sled in there. Let's just, yeah, okay, 30 pin, 30 pin. Oh no, it's got the soft touch rubber. Ooh, ooh, disgusting. That's funny, they still got the, <laughs> they still got the screen protector on there. Uh, guess who's surprised? This thing probably didn't get the benefit of too much use. Big screen, much bigger than I expected. Wow, I wouldn't have guessed that. Big screen. It's probably got a decent picture. Um, anyway, let's, yeah. Uh, but it does have the Apple style. Of course, it's got the Apple style um, the badge with the um, crinkly molded uh, stamped plastic sheet. Uh, but you know what's interesting here? Is that a battery compartment? Wow, could this be an early Bear 18650? We ready to find out? Oh, oh, it's not bare. Oh, Ooh. boy, howdy. That is so close to a bare 18650. That doesn't weigh very much. That doesn't weigh as much as a normal, as a modern one. That's probably not a Samsung or anything. I'm guessing that's 2200 milliamps is probably optimistic to put it mildly. Anyway. Um, wow. All right. So hmm. didn't really, didn't really, I expected a, a flat pack, um, uh, well, not lipo, but um, they had flat pack lithium ion back then, right? That's what was in the iPod, I believe. All right, what do we got for accessories? This could be our iPod video adapter or cables. That's going to be the AV dock. Yep. Is there a power supply here? Uh oh, I don't see one. Hmm. This takes a proprietary power supply, which I don't don't seem to have. Uh oh. This could end before it begins. She docks. Uh, she docks. I said she docks. Whoa, Nelly, why is it so hard? There we go. Jesus Louise, huh? That was strange. That's not very well made. And oh, exciting. There's some open questions about this product. Uh, okay, well, so it's not going to do much turned off and sitting there. So I think you've seen. What you're gonna see, oh, sorry, the audio in, video in and out are all eighth inch plugs, which is not at all surprising. So this either comes with a whole bevy of adapter cables. We'll take a second look at those adapter cables. Maybe there's a DC adapter in there. But anyway, this either come, came with a whole crap load of adapter cables, or um, you were expected to either do video in or out, not both at once. Oh yeah, whole bevy of cables. Look at that, yeah, sure is shooting. All right, well, so unfortunately, the worst possible evil has come to pass. No power, no power, no power. Hmm, okay, well, so yeah, she ended before she, before she could begin. Um, I'm gonna have to track down a power supply for this thing, which is probably gonna be very, very tough before I can do anything at all with it. I'll have to rip the software uh, later. Let's cover just a couple other things. Let's put a battery in one of these and see if she goes. Where's the battery? Actually, no, that one might not be charged. Let's try one. There's a higher probability of being charged. Uh, oh, backwards. Uh, oh, <laughs> can't be that thick. It's got a, a restriction in there. Okay, on. Well, no. No, on is a lie. Uh, do I have a shallower battery 
No. But I can get one on charge. Maybe have one lit. Well, you know what? Before I do that, question, is this really not working? Maybe it's not charged. Or maybe eh, it's the camera. This guy works. So let's try the other one. No signs of life, Captain. Uh, yeah, okay. There might be some trick going on with this carrier where I've got to... Will this come out readily? Oh, it will. There we go. Okay, let's try it again. No juice. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That might not be the on button. Uh, I'm gonna have to read the manual for this thing. Here, let's let's look at some DL. Uh, bleh. Here, let's look at some DSLRs that do work. I've got that. Have you met me? That's not it, right? That's the Nikon. That's the Nikon. That's. Pay no attention to the Nikon behind the curtain. Nothing to write home about with that one, but this one is a different story. These ones, I should say. Uh, okay, so we got two differently bizarre devices here. Here's numero uno. Uh, this is a Fuji FinePix S2 Pro. So this is a collaboration between Nikon and Fujifilm. And this uses, I think, a Fuji CCD on a Nikon film body. It's based on like a, an F of some kind, I think. Now, much like the other guy, come on, much like the previous one, uh, this, you can actually sort of see the part line where it stops being one camera and starts being the other. Like, you can sort of see around here kind of the remnants of where this used to be a film body. In addition, it's got two separate interfaces. I don't think I can power this on. Do I have a battery that works? Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, double A's. It only takes double A's, except that again, it also takes three volt lithium photo batteries to run the flash. Uh, again, quite a common thing in these early days. Uh, it's got Firewire, honk, right there, right? So, and it's cast into the body, but it's behind the part line. So everything here, this is all the film camera, and this battery runs that, and this screen, and that screen, no, that's not true. This screen, I believe, is tied to the film camera. I think it'll run with just the three volt batteries. These two screens are tied to the digital one. This one, I think, is used only for playback. Uh, so it's a color screen, and it's a bitmap addressable. No, they're both bitmap addressable. This one is used as your control, your config interface. That's where you do things like you can, um, hold a button here and press a button there and then set your ISO and, and stuff like that. All the, the digital only settings show up on this one. Very strange design. It does, however, take compact flash, which sets it apart from a lot of the really early DSLRs that only took PC card. Um, but in order to continue being weird, it does also take smart media. And this is a, <laughs> this is a 64 meg smart media card, absolute um, monster for smart media. Almost all those I ever see are one meg, four meg at most. Anyway, this is actually a decent, it's an okay camera. It's not that bad. Went shooting with it. Um, and I, I went across the country to Michigan for a very miserable family visit and it actually did all right. Now this guy, this is a Nikon D1X. You can see there's several things going on here. Uh, perhaps not uh not factory so this guy same sort of thing you know at some point it was a nikon film body i think but it's long since been transmogrified um now it took what did it take i think it took weird lithium packs no i'm sorry this i'm not going to take this thing out but the battery pack that it came with was completely proprietary it was this it's this deep it's it's all 1862 cells which as i've established before i'm not willing to touch in any sort of deep intimate way um except to gut them. So I, I had two of these, neither worked. Um, so I pulled this out, gutted it, took the batteries out, and I put in a bypass with this lever lock. Um, and I had, I don't know why it's not here anymore. I don't know what happened to it, but I had a Sony Info Lithium sled rubber banded to the bottom and then lever locked on here. Super safe, and it worked. It worked, well, I would say quite well, but this camera never worked quite well. It was just okay. Anyway, this one is too early to have Firewire. These are separated by a couple of I, <laughs> I'm on a roll today. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. I forgot this had Firewire. 
I've never tried that. I thought there was just a serial interface under there. Why doesn't it say FireWire? Oh, I think it used to. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> I was making an ass out of myself. So I'm sorry, I guess this is later than I thought. This must be from like 97, something like that. I do love the uh, CF card door, which you have to open a Molly cover to get to. Very good. That one just takes CF. No silly smart media. And of course, it's got the built-in portrait controls. This thing also, not bad. Not like not a bad shooting experience. Not necessarily the best camera, but not a bad shooting experience. Yeah. One last thing I wanted to cover. Had an interesting interaction happen. So after I made the video about the mini disc camcorder uh, from Sony, someone got in touch with me like a month later and said, hey, I've got some video mini discs. I'd like to rip, can you help? Well, of course. I mean, not of course, right? <laughs> you know, this thing could break at any second. So I, I did have the thought, maybe I shouldn't uh, put a whole bunch of discs through this thing and maybe wear out the mechanism. But I got in touch with the actual owner. Um, the, I don't own this one, I have two of these. The one that's that's got all Japanese labels on it, I own, and it doesn't work. This one was loaned to me, and uh, I gotta return it. But I got in touch with the owner, uh, who, who I, I shall not mention for fear they'll be summoned. They know who they are. Uh, and they said, no, go for it. Uh, they wanted to do this service as well. So so the fellow sent me all the discs, and you know, he asked if I wanted to be paid, and I'm like, well, normally yes, but in this case, uh, these discs are rare enough that I'll just take them and trade, right? Because then in the future, when someone gets in touch with me and says, hey, I watched your video, I've got one of these, do you have any discs? I can say yes, absolutely. So anyway, they sent these all to me, and um, I went ahead and ripped them, and it worked. And the fascinating thing about it is, uh, I'm not going to uh, violate this person's privacy by going through and, and showing you or telling you about the contents of these discs, right? But you can imagine it's very domestic. I didn't sit there and watch every second of this person's family videos or anything like that, but it, it's impossible to rip something without knowing what's on it. It's just unavoidable, right? So I just, I had to glance over periodically and it was exactly what you'd expect from a camcorder. Just completely ordinary, everyday, domestic family video. And it was remarkable because to us, you know, uh, 30 years later, this thing feels like an artifact, not just because it's old, but because it's so unusual, right? But when this was purchased, presumably the person who purchased it didn't know it was going to be so unusual, right? If you were buying a DVD camcorder in 2001, you didn't know there was ever going to be another one. Well, it turned out there were thousands, but you didn't know that, right? You just, you bought it to use. You didn't buy it thinking it was going to be part of some ecosystem. You didn't buy it thinking it was going to be uh, the future or, or you just bought it, right? You looked at what was on the market. You just bought whatever looked right. Well, apparently the person who bought this felt this was the right choice out of all the products in the market. And of course, you could say that about a lot of things, right? You know, of, of, all, of all the things I have in my collection, right? All the things that live on, the, well, not this stuff. This is all pro gear. That, that pro gear don't count. But someone thought this TV was the best choice for a little TV to take camping, right? And somebody thought that every single digital camera in this box of digital cameras was the right one for them to use, either to get started with digital photography or to improve their capabilities or whatever. They're just normal products that people bought to use. And 30 years later, that doesn't feel like the case, right? But it was. This was just a thing that someone bought that served its purpose and later, much later, became something unique and unusual and remarkable. It was just a camcorder until it became the only camcorder that ever took minidisc. When you're doing the sort of thing that I'm doing, some of the stuff like the, the MPEG cam, for instance, you wonder, did anybody ever use this seriously? You know how much I, I would love to see footage of someone's vacation taken on a Hitachi MPEG cam just to see that someone took it seriously, that they really did use it for its intended purpose. Um, and I'd love to see photos taken with one of these RG-175s. I would love to see video recorded on one of these ICs. I would love to see that every one of these things was at one point the actual solution to someone's problem, and not just a product that, uh, you know, Sony made as a flex and never really ended up fulfilling its intended purpose. Because that's what it's all about, right? I mean, the whole point of all this, why are we making all this plastic crap if it's not actually gonna solve a problem? I'd like to think that most stuff did. Anyway, thanks for watching.